housing boom created a golden age of DIY as people started to do up old houses or repair new ones. Our men soon set about knocking down walls and knocking up odd shelves and tables. And which was the channel to give you loads of practical, no-nonsense advice in full 625 lion colour? Well, be If a programme is fun, it can't be worthy. Educational programmes have got to be dull. And some of them, I'm afraid, definitely were. Don't take all the four. Pour me some. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Cheerio. Bye for now. <coughs> Cheers. Cheers. The 70s was a cascade of gadgetry, a time when we could load up the home with electric dreams. We filled the kitchen with white goods, the living room with hi-fi, and a television that doubled as an exercise machine. As, without a remote control, you had to cross through the shag pile every time you changed channel. Though now we had BBC Two, why would we ever want to? In just ten years, the house had changed beyond recognition. It should mean that we're free to decide for ourselves the sort of objects we want to live with at home. But it isn't quite true. For one thing, our choice is limited to what the manufacturers choose to offer us. Take these two toasters, for instance. One is on the market, the other is a prototype and isn't available. At Which first glance, I like that. I, I like plain things. Which toaster do you prefer from these two? The black one, without the shadow of a doubt, the black one. Why? Well, I look at my clothes, I black, I like black. <laughs> What do you think of the black one? Well, it looks like a camera to me. It's, you know, it doesn't do anything for me, but maybe the youngsters might like it because it's black and it's stark and, you know, it's uh, whatever turns you on. What do you think of the other one? Well, it's all right. A bit gorgeous, isn't it? So, among the people we spoke to, the black toaster seemed to be preferred by the majority. But the manufacturers never produced it. They didn't think it would appeal to popular taste. In the 70s, the supermarkets were the best thing since sliced bread. If sliced bread is a good thing, that is. Good morning, shoppers. May I take this opportunity to welcome you? This store has been built for your pleasure. You will find everything for your home requirements within this store. We have one of the finest quality fresh meats departments in the world. In 1973, it was claimed a new supermarket was opening every day. Food, the most important item in the home, was becoming the kingdom of the major brands. Supermarkets were hot news. They were glamorous places. They were big. You had this trolley to push. You were in charge. And convenience food was all the rage. Quick, easy meals for the busy housewife, now juggling the twin demands of home and work. If you were working very long hours and you had very few, very few ingredients to source from, it was fault-free. You, you knew what to do. They fed into a sort of basic British disinterest in food. They wanted to do it quickly. They wanted convenience. They didn't want to bother with going to the butcher, the baker, and everything else. And that was because we have never been well educated about food. We just, it's not what we spend our money on. In the early 70s, BBC Two examined our daily bread, 